Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back to the channel. We are here to do a review slash recap for The Passage, Season 1, Episode 8. Thank you guys so much for tuning in week after week with this show. The Those of you who watch it and love it and comment down below, I really appreciate it. I want to say if you are new to my channel, if you're just now discovering me because of this show, I would love to have you as a tribe member. Um, go ahead and hit that subscription bell as well as the little bell right next to it. That's called the notification bell that lets you know when I come in with new videos. Definitely want to do that. As well as give me a thumbs up. It's like saying, hey, Miss Honey. <laughs> and don't forget to comment down below. Now, to all my honeybees, I owe you guys a huge apology because... Although I read all the comments that you guys left on last week, I did not have time to comment. And here's why. The reason why is because I actually sit down and type out responses. <laughs> and I just haven't had the opportunity. Like I put it off and forget. And then now here we are back this week. But I'm definitely going to go and make those comments. Um, one of the comments that one of my... Um, favorite honeybees Badu made was she was asking about why didn't they if they kill Winston why didn't they just they can't kill Fanning because it would cause everybody else to die but if they can kill Winston then they can kill Shauna they can kill um you know the other in the other uh virals that are there very very valid point very valid point I didn't think of it extremely valid point i had like this long thesis i was gonna respond to it and every time i put my head down to respond girl i'm telling you somebody walked up some i had to do something i had to go somewhere i was riding something but we are here back for this week this episode is called you are not that girl anymore i think we have this is episode eight, so um, I think it's ten episodes all together. Oh, and it's already like on one. It might be nine episodes. I mean, because next week's going to be gangbusters. But let's talk about this episode. Um, we're going to start with Team Good because Team Evil kind of closes the show out, but... Team Good opens the show. First of all, first things first, Clark is now officially on Team Good. Second thing is, we do get to see Lacey this episode as well as Anthony Carter. But, we're going to talk about it. Amy um, is still in her fantasy apartment. Her mom isn't there anymore. She's reading a book, but Fanning is there. And Fanning begins his 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 siren song. He begins trying to woo her out of her soul as though at the same way he did with um, Elizabeth. But we're going to find out that Amy realizes she has choices just like Elizabeth realized real quick that she had choices as well. She tells him that Carter tells her that she is special and Fanning is like, that's true. She says that Carter says that you're going to try to hurt me. And he says, now that is not true. And he looks like regular Fanning. He doesn't look scary. He, he's just regular Fanning in, in this, in her fantasy. And she's giving it to him. Y'all know, y'all know Amy got enough sass mouth to, to handle herself. She don't mind giving it to him, telling him not to touch her book. Don't touch her. Stop talking to her. Leave all of this stuff. But he's wooing her. He's wooing her. And as he is wooing her, she's going into um, a health stress situation back at the compound. So they taking her physical form out of the bedroom that she was in, this lovely little bedroom, and they are moving her down to 4B. Y'all already know 4B ain't full of nothing but evil virals, okay? So, the doctors, the labs, all that stuff. They're moving her down there because they see that she's turning. And for some reason, Gelder feels like, um, oh, she's, she's, she's not 
she's not what we thought she was. She's just like the others. I'm going to shut all of this down and reboot and revamp this whole Project Noah situation. And we're going to start again, start again fresh, right? Now, part of me felt like he was saying this because he ain't no good no way. He want to kind of get the team good out of the way so he can do whatever he want with Amy. He's a liar. At the same time, we know that all of the virals go through the change. They turn from where they look seemingly normal, they're behaving seemingly normal, and they turn into this whole other situation. And and Fanning is the cause of that. Like he's the person that shows up to sort of exacerbate the change or or usher the change in or help you make a decision that benefits him and and the other virals you know he sort of exacerbates it so while he's in his in her mind in her fantasy home apartment talking to her and trying to woo her out of her very soul they feverishly working on trying to get amy stable and we did not get to see what was going on with Brad last week. We saw that Brad was trying to wake Amy up, but we didn't get anything else from Brad and Lila. So now I'm like, why Lila? So where is Brad? Well, we get to see this because when they take Amy downstairs and Nicole is fighting for Amy, don't take her down there. Don't do this. Put her down there. She's just a child. And Gelder's like, ah, she's not what we thought she was. She's changing after all. So, hey, Clark is trying to get them to stop as well and from taking her down, but it's of no use. Cole and Clark start to talk about what's going on and he's trying to go and get on the elevator after they've gotten on and gone down and he realizes his car doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's not working at all. So she tells him she has this idea. He says, don't worry. I'm going to try and, you know, fix this, get Amy out of here, get her to safety and shut this whole thing down. So that's why one of the reasons why Clark is team good now, because he's full on board. And we learn a lot about Clark in this episode. Meanwhile, we see where um, Gelder is going on about his business, doing his thing. Amy is down. She is completely uh, under, she seems like she's sedated. You know, she's kind of passed out. They've got her strapped down. Nicole is working feverishly trying to get this thing um, figured out in her own mind. She feels like she's got a real good idea. If she can alter the cell that the virus alters. Okay, so in other words, the virus gets into the cell and um, alters it, replicates it, duplicates it, and then grows from there, right? But if they can alter the cell that's being replicated, then it can sort of trick the virus into replicating an antiviral, okay? So it's a very good idea. She just needs to be able to get down to the lab and get to Amy. So what does Clark do? Clark commandeers Gilder. Commandeers him, gets him, gets him in a position where he is hands up. And Gilder's like, what are you doing? You have no right to do this. Now, prior to this, Gilder has gone down and he has talked to uh, the entire staff. Everybody that's working there, he's saying, listen, this thing is being shut down. You guys, as of right now, you guys are relieved of your duty. You don't need to work anymore. You will get bonuses. I understand you might need to party. So feel free to go ahead and party on. Got to clear out of here today. Now, he's already talked to Martinez. Martinez, has um, give, he's given Martinez all the new codes and everything. They've got a plan for keeping the virals contained and all of this stuff. So, when he's getting the hands up, he doesn't know what to do. But you told Clark downstairs that 
when you told everybody else to leave, that his services weren't needed anymore either. Because Clark was trying to say, listen, you got to understand something. These virals are working on something. They are working on something. Um, and it's going to involve them getting out of here and possibly killing all of us in the process of it. Listen to what I'm trying to tell you. Your services are no longer needed, Clark. You know, it's that voice, that voice. Ugh. So they end up hemming him up. And this is where we get to see Brad and Leela. Because when Gelda is deciding, you don't tell me what to do this right before they get on the elevator. You know, it's one elevator to go down to 4B. And Clark want his, want his key card and he want his pad that controls all of the codes and everything in the building. I, you, you, you don't understand what you're doing. You don't get in. And Brad had that gun to the back. Said, yeah, still alive. Surprise. Sorry to disappoint you. And Gelda don't know what to do. He wasn't expecting Brad to be there. He wasn't expecting Brad to still be alive. Brad is a formidable foe. And he knows Brad is not going down without a fight when it comes to Amy. Okay? He is fully aware of Amy and Brad's relationship. So, they get him on the elevator and get his information get his code you know you got to have an eye scan and a thumb scan and all these scans and a swipe card and all this stuff see because clark don't work no more clark's card don't work no more his codes don't work no more and neither does nicole so they use him to get them all down on the elevator leela and nicole go into the lab and they go to work on trying to get this antiviral done trying to get it set up brad is going to get find Amy. He goes to find Amy and when he's with Amy, he's just kind of trying to um, just love on her and rub her head and call her softly and try to gently wake her. She comes to and he tells her, hey, I told you I wouldn't leave you. I told you I wouldn't leave you. I'm back. Are you okay? Are you all right? And she sits up and he says, let's get these, let's get these cuffs off you, you know, because she's strapped down. And she says, no. Because she's afraid that she's going to be this monster. And she's afraid that she might hurt him or hurt Lila. So, she doesn't want him to, to cut her loose. Which is a mistake, but it's okay. Meanwhile, she's going in and out of it. So, she goes out of it again. Goes back down um, into this state where Fanning is still there and he's wooing her. And he has... Um, he said, you, you've got wonderful powers. You can have anything you want. You can do anything you want. How about we have a little fun and I'll show you around a little bit, show you, you know, how fun this thing can be. And so, you know, she's a kid, so she's following along behind him. They still in the fantasy now. Now her body is there with Brad, but her mind is on the other side of town with Fanning. Okay. So he brings her to a tunnel. There's a bike there and she's riding the bike and she's like, Oh, wait a minute. Is this a trick? He was like, no, it's a bike. Get on it. Have some fun. She's riding the bike. She was enjoying herself. You know, as much as she could enjoy herself, she was allowing herself a little bit of happiness. It brings her to this tunnel. At the end of this tunnel, there appears to be a bit of a light. Now, mind you, this whole time, Amy's body is back with Brad, and it's going into sort of fever. It's going, it, it's kicked into high gear. All they can do is give her as much um medicine as they can to try to keep the fever down and just try to keep her keep her in this place where she's not progressing into the transition of becoming a vampire so he tells fanning tells amy that at the end of this tunnel go and look in there and see and then you you make the decision you choose you can choose to um, to have this great power and all of these wonderful things that you can create for yourself and be out of pain and enjoy yourself and, you know, have everything that you want. It says, or you can choose a different alternative, but I promise you, you won't like the different, the different alternative. It, it's, it's some scary, scary stuff. And, uh, she was like, uh, oh, okay. So she heads on off into the tunnel, you know, because she's got to make this decision now. It's not as cavalier as I'm saying it because Fanning is very, very good. And Amy's a smart girl. She's smart as a whip, but still, when you got a Svengali, when you got somebody who is wooing you, actively wooing you, and you are 
it was hard for Anthony to resist as an adult. Even though Anthony and Brad prepare Amy, get her prepared for what Fanning was going to do and get her prepared to sort of resist what Fanning was going to do, she's still a child. She's still a child and he's still really, really good at what he's doing. Back in the real world, Amy is there and she's going, you know, getting closer to turning and transitioning and Nicole is feverishly working and um, Leela is there and she's going to try and get Amy some ice, get Amy cooled off, her temperature is going hay haywire. That's what's going on on 4B. Clark is upstairs. Clark is working a plan. Clark is also flashing back. He's flashing back on when he first got there and Shauna was there. This was after Shauna had been tagged and she had been given the, the virus and she had not yet turned. Well, she wanted to leave. She wanted to leave because like Anthony, she was constantly, constantly having these nightmares and these dreams with fanning in them i keep having the same dream every night and the same guy in it i can't get rid of him i can have nicole get you something to help you sleep she's like nothing's gonna help me from this she walking in the rain on the side of the road look like she dang, dang near barefooted i mean she's all frail and cold and wet and he tells her, look, you in, you're not getting off this property. It's 12 foot of a wire fence. There's snipers everywhere. There's motion pads. And you got a tracker in your neck. So where you going to go? And she's upset. She's like, I'm not going back. You're not taking me back. And he's like, look, let's go and have, sit down and, and get something to eat. We're going to go out. We're going to get something to eat. They go out, they sit down and get, this is all in the flashback. This is before she turned. They go out and get something to eat and they talk. Of course, it's kind of flirtatious. It's kind of friendly and it's, 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 it's semi-sincere. On his part, he tells about, you know, how he went to school. He went to school for creative writing. Shout out to my girl, my twisted life of poetry. When, he, when um, she asked him what he went to school for and he said cre he had a degree in creative writing. I thought about my girl, my twisted life of poetry. She also does a review for this show. And um, Twisted is so talented. She's a creative writer. She's got several books out there. Um, she it, it just made me think of her instantly because she has a tough like outer shell too. But the girl is bad. The girl is bad. She's got a real creative mind and she's got a sensitive mind. And I think that this is what Shauna was really, really liking about Clark because he is tough and he is strong. And um, he, to me, he seemed like he was kind of heartless, but that's the job. That's what he does. He can't go into things in a real emotional type of way because he's got some tough things that he's got to do but he like he let him tell that he's the black sheep of his family he got lawyers and judges and you know um neurosurgeons in his family siblings parents all of that he went to school for creative writing and then went into the military so they are getting to know each other in this flashback it's very endearing in this flashback but at the same time when they finish eating and drinking and talking and all that stuff, the guys come in. She realizes that he's called them to come in and take her back so there won't be no struggle. He calmed her down so there wouldn't be any struggle. Gave a little moment, little moment of joy, but they taking her back. Now, this is something that she resents about him, that he wouldn't just let her go. And... So she's continually coming to him as he's walking through the compound trying to figure out what the heck is going on. And here's the thing that I noticed. Last week when Gelder was talking to uh, the new head of security, Martinez, I wondered why uh, um, no one else was present. Like I knew that Clark had been off trying to find Brad. I just kept wondering, why is he keeping Martinez a secret? I thought this last week, but I thought it was because Brad wasn't there. I thought that's why we weren't seeing Martinez interact with other people. But this week, I thought it strange as well. And the reason why is because when Brad was trying to figure out what's going on, he's looking through this pad that he took from Gelder and he realizes all the codes have been changed. Why is Lawrence, who they had put 
in holding. Lawrence is the caretaker for Fanning. Why is Lawrence out of his set? of his of his holding out of his cell why is he freely walking about like what's really going on so when he goes down to ask the the guys that are at the computer screen ask them to find lawrence they do it i'm like well how if he's been stripped of his security clearance why are they all listening to him he's telling the guys on the elevator what to do if anybody comes off the elevator and they look anything less than human kill it so they they agree they doing it they guarding the elevator they guarding whatever come off of that elevator while he's walking around on the upper level trying to figure it out when he tell them to find him on the on, find lawrence on the closed circuit they did it they complied like he was still in charge i was like well where is martinez where is martinez doing all of this why hasn't he taken over why isn't martinez who's supposed to be the new head of security that came down from the big house why isn't he running stuff? Why isn't he looking for Gelda? Why isn't he running the show? I, it was confusing me. I was just like, I don't know what's going on with this, but this is weird. Anyway, come to find out, Lawrence is out like a zombie, okay? He's been given clearance. Somehow he's been freed from his holding cell, and he is now walking with the mop towards the communications board. Now, this is where all the electrical wiring, it's the hub. You know, it's the mechanical room. And he's going in there with a mop and dragging the mop just like old, oh, just just mindless. Just uh, he's head over to the takes the stick, the 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 um the pole part of the mop and jams it and jams it and jams it into the communication boards. Sparks are flying everywhere. Nah, nah, nah. Now, Clark sees where he is. He sees where he's going. He sees how he's walking and he is running. He is breaking his neck to get there because he knows this is bad. This guy is not under his own influence. So he's running to catch him and before he gets there, he just charges and ruins it. The communication is down now. Now the communication is down. Okay. What the what? What the what? This is when I start to feel a sense of fear because I realize this is it. This is, this is about to go down. It's about to go down. Like the virus is about to get out. Like, oh my gosh. Clark gets him and, and gets him all tied up and drags him. I can't stop. He, he's telling me what to do. I have no choice. I must do it. I must do it. This is what Lawrence is saying. So Clark is going from place to place using Lawrence's eye scan to open doors and get in and out. And he goes and finds Brad and tells Brad, what is what's happening? I got to get to the bottom of this. I got to get this straight. I got they got people tied up everywhere. Folks that's not cooperating, that's with Gilda and, of course, Lawrence. All right? They tie Lawrence up. Lawrence don't want to be tied up. I got work I got to do. I got evil I'm supposed to be doing. You don't understand. Okay? Clark goes and gets Gelda and lets Gelda know. Gelda, he says, Gelda, what is going on? Uh, uh, Lawrence has, has knocked the, the communications board down. And he was like, I hired a new a new security guard and he is going to do And we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll. Uh, Clark drags his ass down to 4B and is guess who? Viral number two is guess who? Okay. One of the most prolific rapists and killers out there. All right, it's Martinez. Martinez has been in Gelda's mind all this time pretending to be a regular human being who has come down from the big house to save everybody and to secure the whole compound. Gelda has been working with a spirit, the spirit of the vampire. He thinks he's on top of things. He thinks he's in control. And all along, he's being played. He's being, the, the devil is making an open show of him. He, just, he don't know what to make of it. He don't know what to make of it. It's at this moment, I, I think that Gelda realized, uh, you over your head, okay? You at the bottom of the ocean looking up, sir. You are not swimming. You are not floating easy breezy on top of the waves, sir. You are drowning, Gelda don't know. I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we got to fix all this. Now we got to fix all this. So he gagged and bound and tied up down, down there too. Meanwhile, 
the the mind is is a is a is a listen when the bible say okay God guard my heart and mind. We see why. We see why. Because Lawrence, Fanning is in Lawrence's mind so strong that even though Lawrence is strapped to a chair with, with zip ties, y'all know zip ties is hard plastic. You can't just pull no zip tie, no good zip tie apart. You can't do that. I ain't talking about no Dollar Tree zip tie. I'm talking about industrial zip ties. He's zip tied to the arm of a chair. And he just thought, chuh, chuh, chuh. I mean, I tell you, not, not, I mean, there's a little bit of twitch, but there's no true discomfort or pain on his face. His mind has been commandeered. He feels no pain, no anguish, no guilt, no shame, no nada. Okay, just, uh, 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 blood just pouring, uh, uh, ripping all the meat. Off of the top of his hands. He is determined to slide his hands from the wrist up. Ugh, ugh, out of these zip ties. I'm, I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. I was like, what? WTF. WTF. This this regular TV. This regular, 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 regular TV. I, 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 was, I was frightened. I ain't going to tell y'all. I ain't going to tell y'all no lie. I was frightened. I was like, this is... This is sickening. Uh, 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 uh. Now, there's some people tied up behind him. They look terrified. They terrified. I'm terrified. Gets his hands loose. They bloody. I mean, they pouring blood. He done ripped the whole top layer of skin off both of his hands. Gets to that keypad, pushes it. Don't even wince in pain. And pushes the door and goes out. And when the door comes back, it's got a bloody print with blood dripping down from it. From the, I was like, oh, 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 it's going down. It's going down. Now, he walking from place to place doing what he got to do to free the virals. Okay. He goes in to see Gelda. Gelda's all tied up. What are you doing? Son, please don't do this. You don't want to do this. I was like, really? Really? Really, Gelda? Really? Really? This is what you're going to do, son? Son? Oh, okay. So you just regular Joe. You leave it to Beaver's dad, huh? 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 You been following peace all this time, huh? Huh? No, this is what you wanted. This is what you wanted when you thought you could be in control, when you thought you could run that which cannot be run. Okay? You ain't in charge of evil. Pure, unadulterated evil, sir. Get a hold of yourself. You're a mere mortal. I want to slap Gelda's face so hard. I just want to get it. Anyway, I digress. He said, sorry, sir. I had no choice, no more than you did. Yeah, because you got got too. You got got too, Gelda. Okay? You was, you was wooed away too. Okay? You were lured and distracted away too. Y'all make a note. Make a note now. Make a note. All right. So Lawrence was getting the keys because now the new security protocol is two people got to be on each side of the pad and turn it simultaneously in order to open the cages, right? So that's what he was going and he was getting the keys. He done got down to the to 4B somehow, this Lawrence, and he walking around down there just mindlessly, just causing uh, uh, ruckus and havoc and wreaking all types of ruckus and havoc down there. Lila is going to get some get some some ice packs because they got to bring Amy's temperature down. Brad has has walked off from Amy to see what can we do because Amy is getting worse. Meanwhile, Amy is back in her fantasy and she's in the tunnel. She's making some decisions. She's thinking about do she want to go this way towards evil or she wants to go this way towards what her perception is death. Amy sits up for a minute in real life out of the fantasy. And, and she's talking to Brad and Brad was saying, listen, I'm going to get you out of here and we're going to set you free. And I want you to know that you can depend on me. And she was like, I, I know, but I feel like, boop, boop, boop. She spits out a tooth. And, and she is so frightened. What does this mean? What is this? He lays her back down and she goes back down into it. 
okay? When he goes to talk to Nicole, and he wants to tell, ask Nicole, what do we do? I think he was talking to her over the walkie. That's what it was. He want to know what what can we do? What what's gonna happen? What's the likelihood? What is what's what what are we looking at here? Give me give give it to me straight. She says, well, she can make a choice. She can she can turn, or she can choose Elizabeth's choice. Okay. Now we don't see Jonah at all because Jonah is somewhere mourning Elizabeth. But while Amy is is passed out. Brad eases up next to her and he says, I know I told you I would never leave you and you promised you would never leave me. But if you have to leave, if you must go, I will understand. If you choose to leave instead of doing, um, in, instead of making this other choice, I'll understand. I'll understand. I was like, oh. It's at this moment in Amy's fantasy, she also reflects back on her mom. What her mom said about her. Being light, being the son, and being a daughter she know wouldn't, wouldn't, that could make the right decisions and do the right things. And she pulls out the matches. Last week I was like, well, how she could take the matches, but she couldn't take the book because she was all in her fantasy. The mom is a fantasy. The matches are a fantasy. You know what I'm saying? It's all still in the fantasy. So she in this tunnel and she strikes the match. And she's holding the match and she's reflecting about what Brad is said and what her mom is said. And she decides, you know what? I ain't got to choose to turn or to die. I can choose to live. I choose to live. She steps into her power, so to speak. Woo! Baby! When, when Fanning in the fantasy sees Amy coming out of that dark tunnel, baby. Riding that bike. He said, Amy, don't do this. What are you doing, Amy? Don't do this. Amy rolled past him so cool. <laughs> she was like, boom. You don't tell me who I am. I decide who I am, baby. Whew. That moment was everything for your girl, Miss Honey. I was like, you best to work it, Amy. Child, in this moment, boom, Nicole gets the antidote. It is done. She is packing it up. She's got it in the tube and she's putting it in his carrier case and she goes for the door and she tries to open the door, but that doggone Lawrence and shut it down. She can't get out the lab. Now she got the answer, the cure for Amy, the cure to keep her from turning. She got that. Okay. From, from exhibiting those bloodthirsty symptoms. She got that, but she locked in the lab with it. Meanwhile, Leela come around the corner with ice packs and she looks up and sees Lawrence and Lawrence tells her he's sorry. And he takes a flashlight and brings it up and whoop knocks Lila out. She goes down. Boom. Head bleeding. Blood. Ugh. Brad is calling for them to come now. Come now. Come now. Amy needs the Amy needs it now. Now. We must you must bring it now. But she can't get out of there. She can't get out of there and bring it. Brad is trying to find Lila. It is a mess. It is a mess. She is passed out on the floor and 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 Lawrence is in the lab and he bloody stumpy hands. He got the, he turning all of the buttons and he just mindlessly doing it. Just, uh, he gets one key over here and one key over here and he, he unlocks it. And the doors are opening. Now, mind you, they had, they gassed all of them. All of the, all of the virals gassed them and they passed out. So they would have been asleep. And, and, um, Lawrence then clear the air out in they, in they, in their glass cages. And so they have woke, waking up, they, they up and alert. They ready. They ready. And you see them all slowly turn with them yellow eyes and them red blue veins in their face. And uh, I was like, oh, this gonna be bad. This is gonna be bad. Meanwhile. Clark is still trying to run around and get this thing rectified. We got to shut this place down. We got to get this fixed. I got to go down. He get on the elevator and Shauna on the elevator with him. Now, you know, she vamp sliding into his mind. And, and, um, you know, she said, it's, we getting out of here. We getting out of here. 
it's it, it's gonna it's it's happening. It's happening now. And he hauls off and kisses her. I mean a good kiss and she loved every minute of it, even though they in fantasy. She loved every minute of it, baby. I don't know how you kiss a figment, but this is what happened. And uh, she says, see, I know you love me. I knew you liked me. Um, he said, I like that that uh, broken little girl from Vegas. Okay. I really, really liked her. I liked her moxie and her husband. He said, but you, I'll put a bullet in your head in a minute. I, nothing will turn me from it. Nothing will keep me from saving Amy. Ooh, the look on her face. She was so cracked. Uh, 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 just straight molded. All right. So Clark is Clark is on one. He's making a decision. I'm choosing good and I'm fighting to the end. All right? Okay. Okay. So let's talk about Team Evil. Fanning is still mourning Elizabeth. And of course, we see where he's working Lawrence. And he's working Amy. He's working the plan. He needs Amy when Carter comes to him as he is sitting. You know, his mind is very powerful. He's working Lawrence over here. He's working Amy over here. And he's mourning Elizabeth right here. And here's Carter. Carter say, you leave Amy alone. She's not like us. She's not one of us. Oh, she's going to be a blood sucker just like you a blood sucker. And we need the 11. You don't need, you don't, I, I, you know. And he yokes him up. You know, they both in each other's, you know, vamp slide into each other. And, yeah, and, and Fanny head butts him. In the fantasy, a little drip of blood come down. When I tell you that was the prettiest thing I ever did see, that beautiful brown black skin and that little drop of blood, it was so red, it was almost black coming out of his nose. I was like, boy, you just, they can't do nothing to make you ugly. They can't do nothing to make you un unattractive, sir. You are a beautiful, beautiful melanated specimen. <laughs> okay. Anyway, still you kind of see that Clark is afraid. He still seems afraid of fanning. He still seems afraid. I, you know, he, he's he's fighting for Amy, but you can tell that he's a little afraid as well. We see where Gelda thought he was running stuff, and, and Martinez ain't even real. Martinez is actually a vamp that was, that was playing him the whole time, vamp sliding him the whole time. The whole time. <laughs> and Shauna gets shocked when she realizes that Clark cannot be played. Everybody is doing... A, a lot of what we're seeing from Team Good is about them exerting their will. It's not about you being wooed or you being pulled away. It's about what you will and won't do, what standards you have um, in your circumstances. If you maintain those standards across the board, you don't have to worry about being easily swayed. I'm not saying you won't be fooled, you won't be tricked um, here and there. But by and large, when you maintain a certain standard, have a bar you will not go below. Okay. That's one of the few things that will save you and keep your mind from turning against you. You won't go but so far in the thing. And we're seeing that from the team good. We're seeing team good choosing to do what's right. Choosing light and life over death and, and gore and destruction. We saw that from Amy. This was a very, very good episode. We're seeing this with Clark. when him He's making a clear line in the sand between him and Shauna. As she is now. Unacceptable. I won't have any parts of it. Same thing with Amy. All right. And we do get to see our good, good friend, Lacey. Lacey hitching a ride. She taking trucks down to tell a ride, tell you ride. And that's in Colorado. She on her way to that compound. I believe Lacey going to ride up in there. She going to ride up in there like, a, like the four horsemen. <laughs> She meant to bring the four horsemen of the apocalypse down on these mugs, okay? <laughs> it, next week is going to be crazy. This episode is nut. Listen, when Lawrence turned that key, simultaneously turned the keys, opens the cages, and those vamps go to turn eyes glowing boy amy had just got down off the table braided untied her she just hopped down off the table at the same time she turns <sighs> she got yellow eyes too 
I said, oh no. But then I remembered, Amy Cho was good. Amy Cho was good. She everything they are, but she ain't evil. She not evil. So what is this? What is it? Is it about them all being tuned in? I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, y'all, that's how it ended. It was so, so good. Episode goes off. Amy, we don't know how we gonna get this, get this antiviral to Amy. Is it even possible? Uh, um, the, the virals are out. The cages are open. It's about to be a bloodbath. It's people everywhere. Clark has been trying to get the people off of the property, but they partying. And they are not trying to hear leaving. They don't feel no sense of fear. They think they're going to get bonuses. It's going to be a bloodbath. But we got Team Good. We got Team Good. And that Team Good still includes Anthony Carter. Because Anthony Carter has an opportunity to exert his will as well. To do good and not to do evil. Hopefully we'll see Jonah back next week. I don't know if next week is the season finale. But if it is, you guys know I will be right here with all of the deets. Y'all tell me what y'all thought of this episode. What did y'all think of Amy and the fantasy? What did y'all think about that doggone Lawrence pulling them hands out of them zip ties? I was like, oh, oh. Y'all tell me what you think. Put it down below. And until next time, honeybees. Mwah, mwah, mwah.